Hi there guys, today we're going to do another Arduino video and uh, this time we're testing a relay I have recently, I'm just looking for a spare, it's not even, oh here we go, this type of relay, let's see if we can get it to the camera, there we go. And yeah, I got the shakes in that arm. I just got my uh, metal stitching out today, so oh, right there it's not itching anymore. Well, in fact, it's itching a lot, but not so bad. And I can actually scratch it now. Let's try the other arm. Here we go. Let's see if the camera feels like focusing on that. Oh, see my finger. There we go. Yes. And uh, I've got a small experiment set up right here. Well, we are going to run a Lego motor. And it's a 9 volt DC motor. And it's actually a perfect example to show you how to use a relay to control systems at a different voltage than your Arduino. Your, remember your RGV? Ah, oh, oh, oh. Arduino circuit is running at 3 to 5 volts depending on what type of Arduino you're using and I'm using the Arduino Uno today and it's a 5 volt circuit. So this one is 9 volt and I don't feel comfortable pulling 9 volts through the Arduino. And uh, that's why we use the relays. So let's get on with it. And I'm going to, just like last time, move my camera. I actually, I'm going to post a picture now that shows uh, the use of this relay. I made a cheat machine for my Android tablet where I had a Lego built with this. This thing, this is sort of a tablet pen. It has a piece of rubber. So it was just tapping uh, one of those stupid games where you just had to mine. And so it would just stand there tapping, tapping, move the tablet a bit, tap, move the tablet a bit, tap, move <laughs> for 24 hours a day. And uh, that was a bit of fun. Anyway, uh, I used uh, this relay to control that because it. Of course, it ran on 9 volts, so I had to use something to control it. And let me just switch camera position. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> As you can see, this is the Arduino, Arduino Uno. It's already hooked up to my PC using 5 volts. Let's use this to find it. And uh, let's move other things a bit out of the ship. And so you have this wire hooking up this breadboard to 5 volts and a negative and it's on both sides. I have a button in the middle with a 1k resistor and don't pay attention to these two right now or the green wire. But what happens is when I press this button it's going to send a signal through the yellow wire over to the Arduino. Now, on the top side, you can see I have a red, black, that's just power and ground. The green one is a signal from the Arduino to, let's just move this around a bit, my relay. And let me grab the other relay again. The relay is really hooked up quite simple. So you get it without shadow. And see it says 5 volts at the top, round and in, in the middle. And then there is a jumper switch on the two last pins. That's ground and communication. So we're just going to leave it for now. And we're not going to talk about it. All we're going to use are these, these three pins. Voltage, ground and in. What in means is actually to tell this small black one is called an octocoupler to switch the relay 
So it's constantly getting five volts and it's grounded, of course. And when it gets another signal on this next pin, it's going to switch the relay. Now, the relay itself, it has three. But what it really means is, you can see it right here, it has some functions, normally closed and normally open. That just means uh, I hook up one right here and use one of these. So if I use this and this, it's normally open. If I use this and this, it should be normally closed. And when you switch the button, it switches. That's the idea, at least. Off with that, then we look here. I got it hooked up. You can see there's a red light. <coughs> Excuse me. That red light actually means it's on right now. So, I'm going to press the button. And you can see the red light goes off. Right now, there's no connection between these two white wires. Now there is a connection. Hmm. Hmm. Let's think about that. And move on while we're thinking about that. All of this from the Arduino over here, this breadboard and this relay is one circuit. The white wires, the reason I've chosen white wires, in reality I have, should have chosen red or, or in something indicating power, is uh, I just wanted to indicate in this video this is a different circuit over here. And we're just pressing this button connected to this circuit. So let's watch the second part of the circuit. It's actually quite simple as well. Let's just move things a bit over. Remember, the white wires are connected up to the relay. Up here, I have a black and a red. That's just uh, my power. This could be anything, depending on what type of system you're working with. In my case, I'm working with 9 volts, so a 9 volt battery connector. <coughs> Excuse me again. Uh, of course, it's grounded across both sides of the board, as you can see, and the power is transferred through the relay. And you may argue why I'm doing it this way. Well, in reality, I should also ground this one because imagine running 220, 50 volts through this wire and you touch this one. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have a fun time. You're going to have a bad day. Anyway, 5 volts is fine, 9 volts is fine. We are not running with it. High amperes. Grounded on both sides. And this LED is just to indicate that the circuit is closed and running. But what is very important is right here. As you can see, this one is actually the wire going up to uh, the Lego engine. And it's just an extension wire. I cut in half and I just shoved them right in there. But before the wire, you can see there is a diode and there's a small marking on it. It, it indicates which way the, the current is running. And the reason I'm not hooking this directly up to plus and minus down here is because whenever you are working with a DC motor like this one, you can generate power doing this. It's also a generator. So whenever I turn this like this, I'm generating power down here. So if this is running with, with a high RPM, you can see it's it takes some time before it stops. But if you're stopping, sending power this way and this keeps running you're actually going to send power backwards through the system and this may actually ruin uh, many of your designs or circuits and even short circuit something and that's not nice let's hook up this engine uh, since it's lego it's very easy just connect these two bricks there we go and then uh, let's see if I can get everything in the shot. So let's just 
that up there and get the keyboard out of the way. So I have my engine. Let's get that in the shot. Engine right here. My circuit for the engine. The relay. The Arduino circuit. So it's actually like this. One circuit over here and another over here. Now if I power, I'm just using an ordinary 9 volt battery and I hook it up to, or at least I'll try to disconnect the sign. It's really a problem sometimes. There we go. It's now hooked up as you can see. Let's just get that end shot so you can see it's hooked up right there. I'm now going to press the button and let's turn the engine so you can see. There we go. And you should be able to hear the click from the relay. So let's see. And you saw the green light going on as well. That's actually a relay working. I'll show you the code in a second. It's really nothing. It just tests for input through this yellow wire. And if there is a input, it's going to send one out to the green one over here. We'll get to that in a minute. But what I wanted to show you is if we're going to replace this diode with a let's see what small piece of wire. Let's pull that out. I'm going to illustrate the problem with DC engines. Hook that up there and hook that. There we go. Now we have a wire instead of the diode in front. And it will still work, but notice what happens with the with the light LED ones. I'm going to turn it a bit, and uh, I'm going to press. It turns on, and notice what happens when I release. Did you see that? It sort of fades out. That fade is actually power generated from. Uh, the DC engine. Let's see if I don't know if I can. Yeah, I can actually generate enough power just by doing this to turn the LED on. That's a problem. And that's a problem we would like to avoid to protect our circuits. Of course, right now we're just running it straight over a LED through a resistor, so there is no problems here. But imagine running it straight into a integrated circuit or something like that. That could potentially mean a catastrophic failure. So, let's see. Reinsert the diode. There we go. And I should not be able to. There we go. You can see. Let's shade. No power is generated to the lamp. And it works again. Instant turns off. So, Let's switch over to the code for a second. Let's just put that in the screen. Maybe that's a nice screenshot. <laughs> it's a bit messy, and uh, next time I'm going to move the camera a bit up. Sorry about that. So you can get a better view of the entire board. Okay, here we go. Back again. Remember, I talked about the code and uh, yeah, I just put it away, the build, the relay. And I talked about using these two instead of these two. The thing is, what I have done is, is fine for a, a model, but this is not something you want to do for a real working design because there is a flaw. And it's a very big flaw, and I didn't show you on purpose. Some of you might have caught it. <laughs> but the thing is, imagine this situation. You have this relay built just like mine, except it might be on a bigger circuit or bigger engine or something. And there's a thunderstorm. And then you have your relay 
something like this, your circuit protection relays. They usually look something like this, and and they often switch off when there's a thunderstorm, when you get a short circuit or just a failure. And it sounds something like this, and it's off. What happens then? Well, in this case, the build you just saw would turn the engine on and leave it running. You would be unable to control it. And that's because I have reversed the design, and I did that on purpose. Uh, at first, I didn't do it because I was figuring out how these relay worked. Once I figured it out, I thought, well, that's funny. So I figured I could sort it out using code. Yeah, let's put this away again. Uh, and what we got here is basically just the setup, indicating which pins goes to what. Then we have output and input. We just tell the computer what, or sorry, the processor what we want to do with the different pins. Then we just read the pin, and if the pin is high, then we turn the motor pin high. Yeah, that's a bit reversed of what we're actually doing. Because if you remember, the light was on constantly on this device. As soon as I powered the Arduino, there was a red light indicating this was on. That is because before I uploaded the skets, I switched these around. Meaning, whenever I didn't touch the pin, the motor was high. Yeah. Lots of mail. Thank you. Thank you. Go away. And whenever I pressed the pin, the motor would go low. Meaning, whenever you release, it was working opposite of what it should have done. Well, it's, there's an easy fix. You can just reverse your design and it would work out of the box. I just thought it would be funny to see what would go on. And uh, there's actually a small test I can do. Let's, let's uh, do this on screen. There we go. So, as you can see, the 9 volt is not connected. Hey, I'm right here. <laughs> I'm hooking up the Arduino and listen for the window sound. There we go. Arduino is hooked up. The relay lights up. As you can see, red light right there. But the motor is not running. But I haven't connected the battery. Let's uh, let's hook up the battery. So there we go. Everything is hooked up. Now imagine there's a thunderstorm. I might need to hold this while this happens. So the thunderstorm is going to cut out the relay for the Arduino. And uh, it's constantly running. <laughs> That's a problem. As soon as you uh, hook up the relay, it turns off again. Yeah. A way you should have fixed that or do it is to reverse the relay and how you connect it. And this is why simulating things like this is uh, fun because sometimes you run into unexpected things, but even funny things like this. And that's all the code there is for this project. Thanks for watching, guys. Comment, rate, subscribe, and uh, by the way, I might do something with the, the other LEGO bricks. The LEGO set I'm using is, uh, you can see there's a touch sensor as well. I wonder why I can do with that. This is a camera or light sensor. I'm not sure how it works, but we'll figure it out. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.